everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's Whitney here. <laughs> Obviously. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, how are you all today? We have just, um, well, we finished off school somewhat early today. Um, we also found out yesterday that our instructional days are going to be done on Tuesday next week because the last two days of school, Wednesday and Thursday, you have to, um, create a, an appointment and each kid has a 10 minute appointment and I have to take them up to the school and they're dropping off their um, books um, that they, any textbooks that they've got, library books, um, if, they, if you had any devices from the school, which neither my kids uh, checked out devices from the school. And then um, they get to clean out their lockers, their band lockers, band slash orchestra lockers, and then also their PE lockers. Um, Thankfully, my kids had the wherewithal to completely clean out their wellness or their PE lockers and their um, band and orchestra lockers before that last day of school that they actually had in the building. I think the teachers kind of knew that there was a possibility that this could happen and warned them and both my kids did take that to heart and cleaned both those out so we don't have like stinky PE clothes that have been in there since mid-March. Um, they brought all those home. Those have actually been cleaned and stashed away until next year. They have uniforms that they have to wear for PE. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's happening on Wednesday and Thursday. So I've made them both appointments, one's at 8, 10 in the morning, one's at 8, 20 in the morning on Wednesday. Um, and then they get to pick up their yearbooks. So they have to wear gloves and masks and it's just such a weird thing. But, um, luckily they do have textbooks they need to return. They need to pick up yearbooks. And, um, I think both of them said they just have some locker shelves in their lockers that they just need to retrieve. Um, so I don't think it should take that long, but that's kind of little bit exciting that um, instruction is going to be over Tuesday. So we just have one more day of blue day that was today and two more days of white days, which is tomorrow, which is our longer day, but oh well. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's gone smoothly. I spent the morning answering emails and doing some email correspondence that I have been the problem with the emails. I read my emails on my phone all the time. I hate responding to emails on my phone because it's not an actual keyboard. So I have to set aside time to act, number one right now, have access to my computer because my kids are using my computer for um, schoolwork. So I have to have access to my computer. And then it also, my computer, um, you know, when I do have access to it, a lot of times I'm editing and, um, you know, a video is rendering or something. You can't really do anything on the computer when that is happening. Um, look how red I just made my eye. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, so I have to actually set aside time. So I've done that. Set aside time. I've answered the emails. I have sent some emails. I have done some computer work this morning. Um, yes, so that is done. Feeling good about that. So my plans today were to work a little bit on, uh, maybe filming a little bit of the Kimberly dress sew along, um, and then getting, I can't, I need to film the Kimberly dress sew along at least parts of it before I have access to the pattern to make the other things that I'm not doing the sew along for. Um, but I'm just gonna be real honest that right now I am so unmotivated to film a sew along. <laughs> I'm just so unmotivated today. Um, so I think I can definitely make, maybe not today, but definitely get Sunday's video done um, cause it's going to be talking about, I'm actually going to talk about, it's a PDF pattern. So I'm going to talk about printing off the PDF, how to tape it together. So if you've never done a PDF, it might be helpful for those things. And then we'll delve into, um, pattern adjustments that I'm making. I have to do, it's a darted, uh, two darted or four. It's a bust and a waist dart bot bodice. <laughs> and so I'll be doing a full bust adjustment with two darts, messing with two darts. Um, and I'll also be doing a narrow shoulder adjustment which I have to do almost almost all the time. I didn't have to do it on that butter dress that I just did, but almost all the time I have to do a narrow shoulder adjustment. So um, we will be doing that as well, showing you how I do my narrow shoulder adjustments. Um, also a Linda Lee trick that I learned. Um, anyway, that's gonna be what's the video that's gonna go up on Sunday. I just need to film it, but I'm just really lacking in um, motivation. So actually I was thinking more about, um, this is what happens. I get stuck on something else and I'm making myself wait till June till I really get into it. But I've been thinking about the active wear module and, um, sewing up some stuff. And my daughter is all, I think I mentioned also was quick to jump on that train. <laughs> she really needs or wants some sports bras and, you know, just some workout tops and leggings. 
um, she has, I think, enough like jackets, you know, like um, active wear type jackets and sweatshirts and stuff to be fine. But she does want some sport bras and like tanks, workout tanks, and then um, leggings, which, you know, she's 13. She'll be 14. She'll be an eighth grader in the fall. And I, I get that, like, you know, for any kind of active wear that she's needing to do, she needs active wear too. So, um, and I honestly don't think she's ever had a sports bra. Like, she's just not, her interests are very, um, sedentary interests, you know, art and music and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So she, like I had mentioned before, she had called dibs on, let me get it. On, she really loved this. So I'm going to make her some leggings and I think a sports bra out of this and then maybe do some, um, this is like a, it's see-through in spots. So maybe do some of the um, legging details on the sides in this kind of see-through mesh. And then maybe even doing like, um, maybe on the sports bra, ooh, sorry, doing like a, um, this over the strawberry knit, you know? So it's like a panel or something. I'm gonna look at that. Uh, and then doing like a complete overlay top just in this that can be worn over that. And also I'd like to get a crop top out of this. I don't know how much of this I have. There was a sticker on it, I thought. Well, I guess I just have one and a half yards. I may be, I may be trying to get too much out of it. Um, but anyway, I thought that would also be a great way for me to try out some of my new patterns. So I've printed out the green style, um, stride leggings. I'll pop a picture of what, what I'm talking about here. I try to remember to do that when I'm editing. Um, I'm going to do the stride leggings. I printed that out for her and I've printed off the elevate crop top and, um, overlay. So I would like to, in her size, all of that in her size. And then I have the sports bra. I actually had that printed out at the copy, um, the copy shop. So I get my patterns. When I do have my patterns printed for me, I go to pdfplotting.com. Super easy. And they're the most economical by far. Um, they charge you like a dollar 29, I think per page. Um, you know, some patterns it's, you're printing off like two or three pages and that is the big, um, large format paper. So you're basically printing off, uh, AO size paper. Is that right? Yeah. AO size paper, which is, um, I think like comparable to like the 36 by 48 sizes. So they're huge pieces of paper and they come rolled up. Um, it usually takes a couple days to get. You do have to print off a certain amount and shipping I think is like $7. Um, so you do take that into a consideration for the um, patterns. But anyway, I do have the sports bar pattern printed off. And also you can't do layers when you do it that way. You, it prints it off all the sizes. So I do, I'll just trace off her size um, of the sports bra as well since I've already got that printed out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see what I can get out of this. And then I thought that was give me, I mean, it give me a better idea of how much fabric I need for myself. Cause I still have not ordered any fabric for myself. I should have that stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, but I thought this would give me a little bit better idea. Granted, I'm making a larger size for myself, but really the width doesn't usually change the yardage that you need that much. Um, especially because I were only, our differences is like, I don't know two or three sizes, probably like three sizes. <laughs> her, well, her hip measurement's 35, mine's 39. Her waist is 26 inches, mine's 32. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger difference. <laughs> um, and then it's a difference of 34 and 40 for the full bust. So there's a bit of a difference, but I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm like three sizes, I think bigger in this pattern company than she is. So, um, and we're about the same length. Like I think are, I'm going to make the cropped leggings for both of us, which I think are like going to be like a seven eighth pant, um, hit like the ankle. I really like that length. Um, so I'm going to make both of those for her, but anyway, I'll be able to get a little bit better idea how much fabric I need. So I'm not over buying athletic wear fabric because you know, the patterns have the, um, fabric requirements on there, but they're giving you the length because for instance, for a pair of pants, you need the length because you need the stretch to go selvage to selvage. You don't need usually all the width. So with the rest of the width, you can cut out a crop top and a sports bra. And what is this width? This is, I don't know. It doesn't say, I mean, most of the time this apparel fabric is like 58 inches usually wide. Um, I can measure it, but yeah, but I thought that would give me a better idea of what I would need for myself. So I've been having a think about my own fabric, um, 
for stuff that I want to make. And I think she might be taking some more of this, um, some of the other stuff that's down here in my pile too, because she really liked it. But I was thinking more about my um, color story that I kind of want to work with for my own module. And I was talking to my sister a little bit about it because um, she wears workout wear a lot. And um, I think I mentioned she loves the Lululemon. Um, also, I didn't want to confuse. There's Lululemon, which is the high-end like yoga wear and athletic wear. And then there's Lulu Row, which is the knit um, company that does a lot of like home parties and that kind of thing. Um, they are not, I mean, not... I've never purchased any Lulu Row. I really can't talk to the quality. I have altered some before for um, hemmed and stuff like that. But um, the Lulu Row, I think, has maybe a little bit of issue with see through in the pants. The Lulu Lemon, those are the ones that are like a hundred plus dollars for a pair of leggings. Um, like they're known for not being see through and yada, yada, yada. Anyway can't bring myself to spend that so um, but we were talking a little bit about colors and I think the colors that I was kind of looking at um, on Fabric Fairy my, some of those might have been a little bolder than what I really want and I actually I was looking at the fabric store online and they have a category of activewear and a lot of their activewear is like a merino poly blend um, and actually my Henley that I made for t-shirt week is one of those activewear blends and I really liked it. It's great for wicking away um, and it does it pretty naturally. I mean it does have polyester in it as well but um, it's also antimicrobial, um, the merino is. So anyway I was looking at that and really the prices are not bad. I think the stuff I was looking at, the merino, so this would be like for the overlays and maybe for like a pullover sweatshirt because they had some sweatshirting too. Um, so for tops. But I was looking and they were like 20 USD or $20 a yard New Zealand dollars, which I think came to like 12 something USD, which is a little more price. It's more pricey than the um, stuff I was looking at at the Fabric Fairy. But I was also looking, they had swimwear fabric there as well and a whole bunch of like muted, actually my colors. <laughs> they had like a beautiful chocolate brown. They had a desert orange that was kind of a muted orange and they had an amber amber red that was a solid um, that was really pretty. It looked kind of like that orange red, but not super bright. It was a little more muted, it looked. Um, those three colors really spoke to me. And then they had a um, couple of prints that were really speaking to me. One of them was actually a Liberty print. I was thinking of that possibly as like a, um, so they're swim knits, but they listed them that they were thick enough for leggings and stuff like that. So I'm interested in trying them. Yeah, and they, again, they had a couple of prints that I think might be fun for like a tank, um, like a workout tank possibly, or maybe even part of the sports bra, because my sports bras are going to have to be underlined with power mesh, obviously. Um, so I can use, if something's a little thinner, I don't think it will mind, it matter, because I'll be using the power mesh behind it. Uh, anyway, so I'm still thinking about that, still mulling that over in my head. It's kind of the fun though, the planning. <laughs> Okay, I've been chatting at you for 13 minutes. I'm actually going to go have lunch right now and then, because um, it's already 1.15, I'm going to have lunch and then I'm going to tape together those green style patterns for my daughter. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut those out today. I don't know how much we'll get sewn up today, but of course I will take you guys along for that as we go. Um, I do have to go for a walk at some point, but other than that, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, all we got going on today. Okay, I'll be back later.
Okay, I'm gonna show you what I got done. So you, I was able to capture um, cutting out the rest of everything. Um, I actually got it mostly sewn up. Um, I need to switch back over to cover stitch, which I wanna talk about that for a second. But I have made, I just really wanted to get a feel for how much um, fabric I need to get um, like a tank top. Well, I know how much a tank top, but like the, this crop top, a pair of leggings, and then um, an overlay. Although, I think with most of the stuff I want to make for myself, I won't be using the contrast. Um, so I'm taking that into consideration as well. And a sports bra. That was the other thing. So anyway, I had a yard and a half of this watermelon. I got her leggings out of it. She's not tried these on yet. There's the back. Um, I did the little pockets because this little... Um, fabric here is kind of sheer so I backed it with the watermelon up in this area and across the back and then it's sheer from the bottom of the pocket here down. Um, not sheer but you can see through it a little bit so you know just kind of for a fun added element. Like if you look really close you can see. <laughs> so I've made her the leggings again she hasn't tried these on yet so um, we're a bit grumpy tonight so that won't be happening tonight. <laughs> And then, um, again, I don't have the hems done. I want her to try them on before I do the hems. I think these are going to be fine. We, um, she wanted them cropped, so like the 7 8 length. Um, so that hasn't been cover stitched yet. And then I made the crop top all in the watermelon knit. And this still needs to be, I want to top stitch down because um, my bands are just, the surged edge keeps flipping up. Um, so that will keep my bands all nice and neat once I have cover stitched those down. Uh, but she wanted the racer back. So we did the racer back, um, and then it's got this cute little like crossover bottom hem. Um, I lengthened the bodice by an inch because she's a really long torso, and we did the ultra high rise. So there is ultra high rise, high rise, and mid rise for this pa pattern. We did the ultra high rise. So we'll see how how high up that gets for her. And then with the added inch on this, I think we might have overlap. Um, that's the hope between those two. So this is just the solid. Um, watermelon and then I have made her that overlay again this all still needs to be cover stitched so it's the shirt it's basically just a shirt so I need to, to cover stitch down the binding that goes all the way around to the back it's gonna be kind of hard to tell when it's not on a body but basically this back is gonna get tied So that when it's worn, it's like that in the back, roughly. <laughs> and then it's just solid. See how sheer it is? You can tell when you're looking at it this way. And then those bands will be all cover stitched down. I still need to cover stitch the hem on this and the sleeves. So, um, and it won't be quite that high up, but you get the picture. <laughs> That's a really bad tie job, but you get the picture. So um, I have made that as well. And I think I've got... Um, enough of I don't have a ton of this like I have somewhat large scraps of that fabric but um, I've got enough for a sports bra out of the um, um, watermelon colored solid so um, I mean I'll have to use some power um, power mesh just for the support in that sports bra I, I believe but um, I think that and I want to look at the sports bra pattern again because I may have enough, you know, little bits and pieces of scraps of this that I could add a little bit of this like on top of the um, watermelon, kind of like I did on the on the side panel of the pants, just to bring that in again. Um, although, is it really necessary? I mean, she will never, I mean, the sports bra will always be underneath things. But, you know, maybe the back, like it might be cool to do something on the back of it because that might peek out, um, on, you know, through tank tops workout tank tops and that kind of thing, like the straps and stuff on the back of the sports bra. So I'll play around with that. But what I was doing all that for, <laughs> number one, she wanted all of that. But I also wanted to um, determine what I can get, what I need to buy for myself. And I think in a solid, if I buy a solid, I think, because I'm looking at the fabric store online, 1.5 meters might do it for me because I have enough of this watermelon easily to get another sports bra. Again, I am a larger size, so I will be using more fabric 
And the biggest thing is that if I'm doing solid leggings, I won't be I won't be using a contrast panel in the leggings. I will have to make that out of the um, the solid fabric as well. So I don't know, maybe two meters would be best to do that, but I think I could get leggings, one of these crop tops, and a bra out of two meters, maybe out of 1.5 meters, which is not too bad. And then um, the overlays, it's more like a t-shirt, so it takes um, close to two, I mean just for the length, and it's pretty wide because you need the width in order to be able to tie it, um, or it's got hem bands that you can use. Um, if you wanted to. So anyway, I think I have a much better idea of what I'm going to need going forward as I plan a little bit more. So hopefully I can maybe make some fabric purchases here this week. Um, I'm not going to make myself anything until June. Uh, I just kind of wanted to make this up real quick and I kind of want to make that bra for her tomorrow just so I've made not everything, because I'm going to make myself some workout tanks out of a simplicity pattern. Um, but it, but that would be a different fabric, just like a coordinating fabric. Um, and it just needs a yard. So yeah, I just wanted to get a better idea and make one set to figure out what I would need for myself as I'm planning out all of this module things. So, there you have it. I've been busy. Okay, so let's talk about the cover stitch real quick, and then I really need to go edit this because it's getting late and I need to go to bed. My allergies are, I've been out doing too many long walks and I'm pretty sure the pollen has now impacted itself into my head. <laughs> I need to go to bed. Um, so for specifically, mostly for the pants, there were a few steps that had you um, cover stitching and I cover stitched the, the, um, the thread match isn't great, but I cover stitch, you see I did it backwards. So the loopy side is on the outside. I think that looks a little sportier. Um, but I, there were a few steps where you had to cover stitch and then you had to serge and then you had to cover stitch, but there was no way to wait and do those till last. You know, like with the shirt, I can wait until the end and do all the cover stitching and then I'm done. Um, but that's not the case when I was making the pants. Anyway, I was having to go back and forth and change it from cover stitch to serge and then back again and then change it again and it took me forever to make these leggings and I'm pretty sure I could make these even with the pockets probably 45 minutes tops if I wasn't having to switch back and forth my machine back and forth so many times. It just it was really frustrating. My husband and I went on a walk after that and I was basically giving him <laughs> selling him on how I needed either a dedicated serger or a dedicated cover stitch. And then that machine right back, back there, which I love. I love that machine. It is the Baby Lock Evolution, and I love it. But I need that to either be, you know, for the most part, just a serger or just a cover stitch. Um, so I need to decide if I'm going to be saving for a dedicated cover stitch or a dedicated serger. And then that one will play the other role of the one I don't get. I would just make all this activewear sewing and swimsuit sewing so much easier. I could pretty much exclusively do all knits on that that way if I could use a cover stitch or the cover stitch could just be a chain stitch where you're just using a single stitch. Um, anyway, daydreaming. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for tonight. I'm going to let you guys go and uh, edit this so that I can go to bed. But I just wanted to show you my progress and I think tomorrow I will... Um, I'm actually going to cut out the bra, I think, tomorrow morning. I need to trace it first. Um, trace it off of the coffee shop um, file that I have for that. And uh, then cut it out and get it sewn up. And then I'll switch over to cover stitch and get everything cover stitched. And then I think I'll make myself, I don't know if I'll get to it tomorrow, buckling down on the Kimberly or definitely on Friday. So, um, yeah, that's what we got. Okay, I'm really tired. So I'm going to go edit this and go to bed. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!